Hello everyone, welcome to yet another Cave Divers React. My name is Gus. Hi everybody, it's Woody. Hey, I brought back Elle because some oh, yeah, of you people requested. Wanna... There she is. She likes to sit on my lap. Are you okay, baby? Okay. <laughs> She's going to go back to sleep down there. Today we have a very interesting clip to react to. This one I actually found myself. You know, I, I like okay. watching YouTube videos too, like everyone else. And I was actually, you know, looking at YouTube and one video got recommended to me. It was something like um, top 10 um, final goodbyes or something like that. Like these are people that were in really tough situations and they had a camera and film like their final goodbyes. Like I'm about to die. Like, wow. I love okay. you. Say I love the kids, you know, kind of thing. Wow. Like, their final goodbye. Okay. Pretty, pretty tough video to watch. Yeah. And one of the videos caught my attention i think it was number three or whatever on the list because it was a diver so this diver got stranded in the middle of the ocean um Whoa. i don't really know the details why but i guess he surfaced and the boat had left or something happened okay uh but he was alone in the middle of the ocean and he had a gopro that he took in the dive and he, uh, you know, the night was falling, like he was, you know, nobody was rescuing him. He oh. couldn't see any boats. Wow. Worst case scenario, right? Oh. Just horrible. And he basically recorded his final message and said, you know, it's about to go dark. You know, goodbye, everybody type of thing. So the clip was super short in the video that I watched. So I said, let me see if I can go find the full video so I can watch. I wanted, I wanted to watch the whole thing, and I found them. I found the, the long video, wow. the long version of it. So mm -hmm. that's what we're going to be reacting to today. Wow. Because I think that there's, there are some things we can learn from it, um, safety things, especially because so I, I know. So I'm going to assume since they have the video, he's alive. Or, I mean, he survived it. I well, mean, how else did they find the camera? I, don't, I have no idea. Anyway. Well, what we know is that they found the video. Okay. Um, but Whoa. let's, I, I think there's a lot of things we can learn from it. Okay. Um, and, and I grabbed a couple things that I always dive with that he didn't have in his dive that I want to kind of bring in because I know that a lot of people watching this channel are either thinking about becoming scuba divers or they're brand new scuba divers. So it's good for us to share some of those safety items and again, learn from other people's tragedies and mistakes in some cases so okay. people can dive safer. So, but so you're going to start playing the video and we're going to yep. react to it right now? That's right. Let's go for it. By the way, let me just full disclaimer. This guy's stranded in the middle of the ocean for several hours. Gopers don't have the best audio, so the audio is going to be rough. But he's also frustrated and there's a lot of cursing. So I'm, I'm just I'm, sure there is. I mean, wow. I'm just going to preface this that if you don't like... Foul language. Do we know if he's alive? Well, let's watch the video. Let's watch the video and see. Hold on. Let me uh, me let me pipe the audio so people can uh, actually listen to it. Okay. All right. So that's him in the middle of the ocean. 30 nautical miles floating out there. I'm glad the ocean wasn't rough, so that's a good thing. I'm going to grab my keyboard to pause. Oh, I yeah, let me, a, let me pause it. I already have a question. All right, go ahead. At, and uh, At this point, do we know, just to set it up, how long he's already been out there just now, where it starts? Do we know any of that? He, he will be announcing that in the video as well, but I think at this point it's about two hours. That he's been floating out there. Don't I mean, forget he look, to he doesn't turn look, it on. He doesn't look happy. That's why I'm asking. No, he's yeah. Oh, he's, he already looks worn out. That's why I was asking that everybody. Yeah, but the ocean is not super rough, so that that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. This is this happened in Australia, by the way, I believe. And you know, in oh, Australia, no. everything is out <laughs> to kill you. So <laughs> true. Uh, okay. Yeah. Two hours, 39 minutes. Contemplating life. In the cold. 
20 degrees. <laughs> so 20 degree water, which is 66, 68 degree wow. water. Wow. So it's cold. And I, he just lifted it up. Was that a wetsuit or a dry suit? He, I think he's on a semi-dry wetsuit. He's not on a dry suit. That's cold after a while, man. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's been there for two hours and 40 minutes or so, floating in the ocean, plus the dive time, because he dove. Remember, he finished his dive. He came up alone. I mean, I, I have a, so many questions already. I'm, I'm going to... One question would be, for example... Where is he? How far out is he? Is there current? Is he moving towards something? Like, do they know any of that? I don't. Yeah. I don't know. But I guess we'll find out as the video goes on. Yeah. So I know a couple of those answers. I know that he's thirty nautical miles from the shore, so he's far out there. Okay. And as you know, like you're four miles from the shore and you can't see it. Like four or five miles away from the shore is gone. You can't see anything. This guy's thirty. And he certainly doesn't know that, right? It, right. Sitting out there. Okay. Yeah. He just went on a boat for a dive on a wreck. And now he's yeah. Um so yeah, let's keep watching. Nineteen degrees water. So that's about sixty six degrees. Sixty four, something like that. Fahrenheit. Now, here's an interesting thing Wait, that I, that yeah, I want to point ahead. out. And I was just thinking something else as well. Why do you think he's SMB's lane flat? Do you see an advantage yeah. to that? An advantage? Yeah. By the way, SMB stands for surface market buoy. It's that orange you know, sausage that he has the, yeah. open. We typically have it standing out of the water so the boat can see you in the distance All easily. Right. The only thing I can think of is... Either he's somehow using it as a flotation device and throwing his arms up to rest at times. That's that's one possibility. Yes. Another possibility that I've heard in the past is that let's say you do want to be really moving on the current. That's why I asked earlier, does he know where the current's going? That thing will drag you mm. on the surface. If you lay it down, You get it'll literally drag you somewhere. So it's like being towed. For visibility, obviously, for somebody to see you, there's no advantage. I mean, I can't see it laying down being better than sticking straight up. But wouldn't it be for that long, tiring, just holding it down the whole time? Yeah, I think so. But, more, but I wonder yeah. if it helps with visibility from the air. Like if you have a helicopter looking for you, if laying on the blue water makes more sense than standing in the blue water. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Because I feel that from an angle, standing, it's as good as laying. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm... This yeah, is all but, speculation. But, but I, I think the elephant in the room that i am got to imagine everybody would be asking right now is like, how in the world did this guy get left there? I mean, it's a boat, right? He was on a boat dive? That's right. I've never been on a boat that doesn't either do a roll call or a count before they leave. It's just standard procedure. Among everything else... The first thing that happens when everybody is on board is, okay, everybody sit down, be quiet. That's typically what they do. Roll call. And then here, here, here. Yeah. Right? So, and Unfortunately, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess he obviously, man, I wish I could ask this guy, like, did you come up later? Like, did they say, <laughs> be up in one hour? And I, I came up two hours later. Mm. So the boat, le I mean, I want to, I, I, he was... Whoever this is would know. Right. But I would be like, well, when you came up, could you see the boat? Right. I mean, were you screaming? Did yeah. you have a whistle? I Unfortunately, there is like no information about any of this stuff. Yeah. I mean, but that's like, I, just I, the I would logic. tell you if I knew. I, th there's no information. We don't know. I mean, I want to hear his video and all yeah, of that. Let, but, let's but, keep playing because there's, there's still a lot more to, to review. There was a second look up the Gus, what is he saying? I don't understand all of it. Somewhere. somewhere. I think he's seeing that he hears something somewhere, like a. I don't know where the rescue helicopter's going. A helicopter, yeah. So he's like, I hear a helicopter somewhere. Oh. It's a big SMB. Look at it. it That's down. good. <laughs> Great sense of humor. Will they see me? Will they see Hold me? On. Four time coming, a helicopter. 
very calm. So he saw a boat called a trawler. Uh, he saw a boat in the distance. He took his PCD off and tried to swim to try to catch it for an hour and couldn't catch it. So he's just now exhausted, sitting on his SMB. Sitting on the BCD? Uh, no, I think his BCD, he has it like floating there. Okay. And he's just seeing the sun go down, basically. So this is like the final moments when he talks about this is it. But obviously I could keep up. So that's it. The sun goes down they won't do nothing. So that's a wrap on old Jakey. I guess. So I don't know if you heard that, but he said when the sun goes down they won't do nothing. Okay. Meaning they won't find me. That's a wrap on old Jakey. That his name is Jake. Wow. Yeah. I mean, at night in Australia, I have dove Australia, but you know, on the surface, as much as I love sharks, sometimes the surface stuff floating around is some mistaken identity. So yeah. I hope you're not going to show me somehow they found the video, but something happens to him like but we'll see i don't know if he gets bit by a shark or let's keep watching he's giving up don't take your mask off probably hurts That's what I was going to ask. So I think that's a, I think that's a dive operator that he just called incompetent. Oh. Um, or he called himself incompetent. I don't know. It's hard to listen, but you know, you he remember, mentioned he mentioned that he has no light, and that's why I say it's so important to always dive with a light. Like I had to go upstairs and remove this from my from my uh, rebreather because it was hooked up into it. It never leaves. I always have it on it. This light happens to last for eight hours. So if the night falls, I have eight hours from the time I press the button, eight continuous hours of running time. Some other hours, some other lights can last 24 hours. Some others won't last a few hours, three or whatever. But the point is having a light is important. People say, well, I'm going to go dive at 2 p.m. The sun is out. What's the point? Well, number one, there's critters and stuff that are under crevices and corals that you can see without a light. So you need a dive light for that. And number two, if something like this happens to you, you need a light. So he didn't also, have one. you know, you told me a long time ago about like that GPS tracking device when we're drift diving and I shove it in the pocket now of my BCD. In fact, you it was Summer who bought it for me as a gift. But I think she got the info from you or I told her about yep. it because of you. Yeah, I really I knew about him, but I never used him. And you always had one. I'm yep. like, why do you? So now I always carry one. Yep. This is it. So if you see that one has my name on it. All right. Now, so this yeah. is a Garmin, and again, we're not sponsored by Garmin or anything. This is a Garmin InReach Mini on a dive case. Mm -hmm. I take this on every ocean dive. Every single ocean dive is in my pocket. Basically, I can deploy this thing if I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere. And, and I was going to go farther. Yeah, when, double when O-rings. Started, when you started that, right. I wanted to add one more thing, that when I dove in Australia, the boat operator issued them to all of us. And we, mm. in Australia in particular, and we had to all carry it. We had to do a little mini training session on it and had to carry them in Australia. Very easy to use. You push like one button and it activates yeah. a, a, a beacon. I'm trying to get it to focus. Anyway. It's not focusing with the light. 
But uh, there's a button that says SOS right here at the bottom. Do we know how far that transmits? Would it it's, would it have been it's, picked it's up? It's all over the world. So yeah, it would have been picked up. It's global. Yeah, satellite. Satellite. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I I tested it in the Maldives when I was there because you can text from it. You can actually send text messages. So I was in the boat, just in the Maldives diving, and I sent a text message to my wife from the Garmin. It was pretty cool. So I dive with this thing. It's it's part of the Iridium network. If you're familiar with that, works all over the world. Totally worth it. You have to pay a monthly fee or whatever for it, but I mean, if you dive, it's just safety, right? Let's keep watching. We wouldn't be in this fucking thing. But here we fucking are. So I think he's saying that the dive operators were fishing and not paying attention. Maybe he surfaced away from the boat and. Try to signal them and they were distracted? I'm not but sure. But where's the dive operator? I mean, another elephant in the room, you all must be wondering. If you're the dive operator and you got back and this guy's not on the boat, go out and look for the guy. You <laughs> right. know your coordinates, right? You were the dive operator. You know where you dropped them for the dive. Right. Where is he? Where's the boat operator? I don't understand what's going on here. I really, again, I... Man, this guy, if he's, and you haven't told me, but if he was alive, I, wish I, I would knew. love to pick his brain. Like, there's, n how in the world did this happen? Yeah, I wish I knew the where that operator had. The port side. They would have fucking seen it. I guess time flies when you're having fun. Saying he's thirsty. I'd be frozen. Oh, I suppose I just gotta fucking make a run for that fucking trawler. I'll take my safety sausage and ditch my gear. Push me luck. Wow. It's gonna go for a boat that he sees in the distance. It's like I think I'm gonna. Ditch my gear and wish me luck. The equivalent of hold my beer. I don't know what to do. Wish me luck. Uh oh. I do like that he's thinking it out. That's all I want to say. And I'm gonna hit the the go button. He's he is thinking. He's stopping. What can I do? And he's calm. So. Impressive. By the yeah. way, it looks like some kind of satellite going by in the air up there. Kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Look how dark it is, dude. Millions of square miles. They have to find a dot. Look how easy that is. Bing! So oh, fast. Oh. Oh, maybe. That's the end of it. I'm just... My, my biggest thing that I'm sitting here thinking is... How did this happen? These are standard, number one standard procedure when everybody's back on the boat, do a roll call. I would love this guy to explain, were you late? Did they just decide to leave you because we lost you and we were going to get help? I I don't know. I mean, you know, how did you keep your calmness? What if you lived? 
who found you? We don't know the answer right now. Did, did he live? Do you know if he lived? Well, it, it, that's the tough thing about these reaction videos is that, you know, you, you find a video on the internet and you react to it. And then in some cases, you're left with like more questions than answers. You have no idea. I have and, so many questions. And especially on, on videos, videos like this one mm -hmm. where, I mean, it's just the final goodbye and you never know like... But but they have is we have the video that I, I mean there's no way they could have found the video unless they somehow found his body and then the video camera was still connected to him so right. that could have happened or this dude is alive and if we could find this guy as a follow up video we could ask him questions right. and i don't know the answer but i mean he posted this video or somebody posted this video and we don't know I would love to know, is he alive? I want to ask this guy, why did this happen? And what do you do differently now? And did you sue the boat operator? Did you get her? Did you, how much longer were you out there where the video ended? We, where, where did, we just left off where he's well, like, I don't know. The man. good news is that when I researched this video, I noticed something familiar about this guy's name, Jacob Childs. Okay. That's the diver's name. Oh. And then I remember that Jacob Childs happens to dive a kiss rebreather. We know this guy. What? So, yeah, he's definitely alive. And actually, I figured if he's alive, we should just have him on the show and ask him. Absolutely. <laughs> Directly. Are you kidding me? Right? I, yes. I would love. You've got to get this Dude, if he's alive and we know him, that everybody would w would want to talk to. Uh, yes, do that. Absolutely. So I'm just uh, left here hanging like. <laughs> so there he is, uh, Jacob Childs. Wait, welcome right to the now, show. Right now. Right now. Here we go. That's you. The name, lads. <laughs> oh my goodness. This. Okay. First of all, Gus. Yeah. What? Can I hug you right now on camera? <laughs> I cannot believe you somehow. I had no idea, by the way. I'm Woody. I did not have a clue that Gus was going to bring you on this show right now. This is mind-boggling. <laughs> High five, 100% Gus, and I am so glad to see your face right now, sir. There you go. Yeah, um, good to be here. Yeah, so, Jakey, so... <laughs> Obviously, we're happy that you made it. Uh, we have so many questions. We just watched you uh, out there stranded for six hours, and we just want to know why. Like, why? Why? Why were you out there? Because how many dives did you have when this happened? Like, thousands, right? Yeah, I don't know. Somewhere five, maybe. Four and a half thousand. I mean, four and a half thousand, five thousand, somewhere, somewhere in there. And, Not and exactly sure. Four and a half, five. First of all, I'm still trying to get grips with the fact that I'm <laughs> actually talking to you right now. Okay, <laughs> Gus, total surprise, and I'm very happy. I thought I was just telling Gus, like maybe they found your camera, like on your dead body. I'm sorry to say that. I'm glad that's not the case, but no, I'm still here. I, I unfortunately, I, my, for some people. My first question, Jake, I, I have to ask you. Had you dove yeah. with this dive operator before? Are they a reputable, regular scuba diving operator in Australia? Just start with the big picture. Because mm. I'm going to drill down on this. I have to. <laughs> uh, I was uh, working there as a freelance instructor, actually. Um, uh, it was probably, um, I don't know, I guess you could say it was a little bit before I knew my worth. Um, so it was sort of a company that was one of these companies that uh, paid peanuts, basically. You know, you, you rock up, you get uh, $20 for the day type deal. But um, it was all a little bit dodgy. Um, so the boat that we were out on was a private person's boat and not um, a what you call a charter boat. So in Australia, you have to, your boat has to meet survey requirements. It has to also be uh, captain captained by 
somebody who is a coxswain, at least, uh, which is a national accreditation um, in order to take paying passengers, sort of like a dive master is, you know, to take paying uh, divers. This person on this boat was neither. Um, wow. It was all organized by the dive shop, but it was sort of, uh, yeah, under, underneath the table, let's say. So then were they a private boat that you had dove with in the past or that had experience, had proper training, were, uh, had rescue divers on board, had O2, had oxygen, had AED, you know, had understanding of what we need as drift divers for the boat to be able to handle in case of, God forbid, this. Like, were they in the know? Uh, somewhat. They had all of the equipment. Uh, I brought all of the equipment. There was myself and another dive master there. Uh, and I think three uh, paying customers. So, <clears throat> obviously, myself and the dive master um, were all over all of the emergency equipment. Um, and the captain had been thoroughly briefed um, and had agreed to all of the plans that we had, we had made. Um, but, and tell us that that was going, you, you're setting up my next question. So typically there's a dive briefing for everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have, a, we have a lot of non divers as, as subscribers and I want them to know this doesn't happen. Okay. So if you go into diving this, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm shocked to hear this. So, there was a dive briefing. Tell us yes. what the dive was going to be. Was it a reef? Was it a drift dive? Was it set up to be a one-hour dive? Did you get separated? You we're left hanging from your video. So fill up, fill in the gaps. Okay. So the dive itself is a, um, a dive wreck. Um, I don't know when exactly it went down. So it was a wreck dive. Sits in about 38 meters of water. So fairly deep. Uh, recreational divers... Um, so very limited bottom time. However, lots and lots and lots of fish and, and everything. So even though you weren't on the wreck, you could be above the wreck on the line and still have a, a wicked dive. Right. So, so was it set up to be a maximum <laughs> dive time of one hour? That's a standard. No chance. They can make it an hour and a no, 38. No I mean, that's 130 so, so, feet. So you had a deco dive. No, no, no it no. was a no deco dive. No. Uh, recreational 130 foot only. dive for no no NDL. but, but the briefing but but hear me out guys i have never been on a recreational dive boat where they haven't said minimum maximum dive time is one hour unless it's a technical dive boat right i've never heard them say more than one hour so what right. did what was the plan uh the <laughs> the plan was a very limited plan so it was um, limited dive time, I mean. So our dive time was planning to be like four minutes at the bottom, which is enough to really, really scrape the boundaries of, um, it was, a, yeah, it, for a paddy shop, you know, really scraped about close to, um, yeah, the NDL limits according yeah. to the table. NDL limit at 130 <laughs> is five minutes. Okay. So that's yep. all fine, but still, yep. you always set up a maximum time back on the boat is one hour or whatever. So you had a no, short, it was, yeah. It it was the, it was the four minutes at the bottom, uh, plus ten minutes to get ten minutes to get down or, or whatever, um, and then basically then after that, slowly make our way back up. So the dive time was probably going to be about twenty five. We were going to yeah. spend four minutes on the bottom once we got there, and then. Um, because it was so deep, um, I had drilled into everybody. Go, okay, when it's going to be a no deco dive, there's no deco, but we're going to do some mandatory deco as part of our plan, safety just stuff. for ex ex extra safety. Okay, no deco, right. everybody, <clears throat> means he could come up to the surface at any time during that dive without having to stop. That's what Correct. that means. Right. Now, now, when you came up, were you with the other, I think you said three divers? Were you ascending no. together? So I I hadn't even started the dive. 
this is this is the the bit that gets most people. I can wow. tell by the look on Gus's face too that he doesn't get it either. No. So basically, what happened was I was the first one in the water. So we had somebody in the water, um, just in case somebody jumped in. There was somebody in there to handle any situation that could arise. Which the is dive common. master was dive master the last, the, the last in the water in this case. Um, so basically, what happened was I jumped in. Uh, we were in a pretty heavy current, uh, five knots uh, current, which is about what nine nine kilometers an hour, or almost six yeah. miles. Yeah, give, give yeah. or give or take. Yeah, you're drifting fast. <clears throat> yeah, so I was in there for about ten minutes, um, holding on uh, to a line, but again, holding on fairly strong current. My arm is getting sore. Right. Um, everybody jumps in. We go to the front of the boat using a. a a line from the, the oh. anchor point around right. to the back of the boat. So there was a mooring line? It was a mooring ball going down it was to the a, wreck? At the bow, I assume? Yes, at the right. bow. It was an right. anchor. We dropped an anchor on it. There was no gotcha. permanent mooring line. Okay. Um, so we then made our way down. It was going to be the dive master, then two, then me, then one behind me. Um, we all started to go down. Um, the, the person behind me had problems with his ears. So I was holding onto the line. I've gone to grab the line with my other hand. Um, I have a broken, I had a broken hand. It's sometimes not super strong. Uh, it slipped out of my hand. I, and I was like one meter underneath the boat, two mm. meters underneath the boat. I thought, okay, well, I can either swim really, really, really hard to get back to the line or I come up alongside the boat, grab the line, pull myself back to the bow and descend again. Happy days. I had ascended right next to the boat. Um, it was a high-sided boat, um, not particularly meant for divers or for anybody really in the water. It was a fishing boat. Um, and... During this time, so this whole process of us getting to the front, descending along the anchor, um, doing our you know super checks right at right at the bow before we started to descend, um, probably five minutes, let's say, start start our descent. Probably one minute into our descent, I ascended to then pull myself alongside the boat. Um, the captain, if you can call him that, had then pulled in. All of the lines, as in the line from the back of the rear of the boat, the stern of the boat to the bow. Wow. And we had a, a trail line out the back also. With, um, with, with the divers still in the water, he pulled all the lines? Yeah, he pulled in all the lines so that he could go fishing. Okay. I was wondering, they had either, either the current is too strong, which sometimes South Florida charters will do that because they're going to rip off the line they're literally it's too much current so they'll pull the line and they'll tell you shoot your smb and we're going to find you on the drift or some other crazy reason like you just said they're going to go fishing yeah so they went so he was going fishing um so i had ascended alongside the boat uh, assuming that the line was there uh, obviously a little bit of current so the boat was also behind um, the anchor line Right, uh, and the anchor line had a had a pretty decent angle to it. Right, um, being a high sided boat, I had nothing at all to grab onto. Slick, um, yeah, but, super slick. But could you yell? Were you yelling? I was talking to the captain. I could hear him as well as I can hear you now. What did he talk back? Did yeah, he, of course he, he did. He saw you in the water. Yeah. Oh my, oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> I don't understand. Then, this, like, how could he leave this, you? Yeah. The, the, the craziest, craziest, craziest bit is that we had talked about this in our briefing with him before and with the briefing with the group about this exact, exact situation. Wow. Saying that if there is a case like this, what would happen would be the boat would disconnect from the anchor line, leaving a, a buoy, and then the boat uh, would come off, pick the diver up, or divers up, come back to the boy, tie off again, 
Done. Easy. Absolutely. Makes, Makes sense. total sense. Um, but uh, he didn't do that. He then decided to, he, by the time that he got his, his fishing line in, um, and then tried to throw me the line, I was already pretty far away, thinking, okay, he's just going to follow what we talked about. No problems. Happy days. SMB um, was inflated. You know, it's a six-foot-long uh, SMB, so pretty substantial. Um, we were talking. I was like, yeah, cool. That's what's going to happen. He'll disconnect, come and get me, go back, reconnect, job done. Right. A little bit, little bit messy of a whole situation, but hey, it happens. Everybody's happy at the end of the day. Right. However, that's not what happened. Um, he had a good. Rest- he had a good hook, <laughs> and he didn't want to lose it. No, but okay. So it had nothing to do with what I said in my reaction of <laughs> he didn't do a roll call. He knew you were yeah, in the no, water. This is worse. This, this is way worse. I, this is why I have <laughs> no idea now where this goes. Go ahead. Please finish. Yeah. So. Um, I found out later, um, and I'm not too sure how much I believe this or whether it was just laziness on his behalf, which I tend to lean towards, mm-hmm. um, that he thought that he would wait for the other divers to ascend first and then come and get me. But, I mean, we're in like one and a half meter swell, so what's that, like four foot for Americans, give or take? Right. Yep. Um and of course, we're all divers. Uh, we all want to look slim, so we all wear black. Um, it's a slimming color, they tell me. Well, I don't, but yeah, yeah. Um, My wetsuit is black with uh, lines. Mine's Parallel. light is it blue, it? but lines I'm, or is I'm, it lines? I'm ordering an all pink one. This actually uh, my rebreather and everything is pink but hey go ahead i'm all about the pink too man so yeah you and i are on the same i love your shirt that. by the way like, yeah nice yeah, shirt it's, it's so uh, funny well, gus is like hey, i wonder t- who designed it and gus today was like you know what let's wear our I kiss guess. jerseys today i'm not i had no idea why i'm like <laughs> okay yeah that's cool yeah designed by team, designed right? by gus by yeah, the way team all right so go ahead yeah so um i'm not too sure how much i i believed of, of that story um, but I disappeared really quick anyway, this right. being, you know, this, this much above the water SMB was, yeah, it mean, wasn't as effective as I wished it was. And you did a good yeah. job. I mean, on the video, you can see the SMB is fully inflated because sometimes you see students and stuff. The SMB has like 20% air. Like it's, you know, it's yeah, it was totally fully inflated. And, no, it's no, a, no, and, it's a bi- and it's a big one. I mean, it's not it's, one of those little baby ones. No, this, this was a legit. SMB okay, dog. so yes. so I still am fine. Even if you drifted away, mm-hmm. you have an SMB, and he knows that you're not on the boat. This is where I'm still not understanding things yet. So keep going. <laughs> you and me both. Um, I have no idea where he did why he didn't come and get me. Um, yeah, what the the so the divers had continued. Um. But okay, so that's another thing. But you're the instructor, and the other guy's a dive master. So why did the dive continue? I don't. They 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 continued down. The dive master seen that I wasn't there. Then they started coming back up again. Okay. Um. And because I had we I drilled into them at the beginning, and it was part of the dive plan, and they were all following the dive plan, which was even though it's a no decompression dive, we'll still do some decompression stops just in case, because mm-hmm. we're, you know, 30 nautical miles from shore. Just in case, be a little bit extra yeah, uh, conscious. safety conscious. I, yeah, I do that. Sure. just did that this weekend. I always make some deep stops. So go ahead. So I said, like, yeah, okay, let's do, you know, one minute at 15, yes. two minutes at 12, and, and uh, Meters. so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Metric world, mate. Metric world. I know. Well, we went Except to the for moon. us, so. crazy. We Before. went to the moon. So <laughs> take it easy. All right, so did as well. uh, okay. I got it. So they're coming back up the line. I'm, I'm re-clarifying. The boat is still connected to that line as you're Correct. drifting Correct. to nowhere. So they had started coming back up the line. Um, but because we had talked about this, uh, these, uh, I want to call them decompression stops, but they're more like uh, adjusted safety stops 
minimum decompression, however you want to say it, they had started to do those stops. Um, and so therefore, it takes an extra 15 minutes, give or take, for them to actually hit the surface again, not including their uh, ascent back up from 40 to the first stop. So he was waiting for them to do that, I assume, because he's seen all the bubbles on the line still. Hmm. By the time they had done that, um, let's say, yeah, 25 minutes later, 35 minutes later by the time they're back on the boat, best case, I was well and truly gone. You were, um, gone, you were gone to the point where you could no longer even see the boat? Was it that gone? Yeah, I couldn't see the boat. Wow. Um, I did about an hour later see the boat. And I seen somebody standing on the bow of the boat looking for me. Um, at which time I was trying to signal them as, as best as I could. Um, waving the SMB about, shouting like crazy and so on and so on. To no avail. Um, I later found out that it took roughly two hours from the time that I was, uh, let's say, lost for him to call it into the Coast Guard. Oh my wow. So he was looking for you for two hours or? and Yeah, basically okay. until they ran out of fuel, enough fuel to get home. Uh, okay. Um, so he'd try at least. But, but they were, they were, I don't know, he but I, they, they were scared probably that they lost you and afraid to call the Coast Guard. Yeah. That's uh, the only I'm reason they don't call the Coast Guard, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Because you know the Coast Guard is going to come and say, okay, who's the coxswain or whatever you said? Uh, he's, they're going to start asking for paperwork and all of that and forget. They have nothing. Okay. Correct. All right. So, yeah. Go, so, keep going. Um, yeah. So, I couldn't get in contact with them. They looked, couldn't find me, called the Coast Guard. Uh, the Coast Guard was quick to react. Uh, they sent helicopters uh, straight away uh, and boats. I didn't see any of the boats from then on. Until the police boat that got me right in the end, but uh, from that point on, um, I didn't see any rescue boats. But we don't um, know, we don't know that part of the story yet. So when you okay. said police boat got you right at the end, we left your off on your video where you were going to ditch your gear and use yep. and have your SMB as an additional floating device and make a run for a boat that you saw in the distance. Yeah, a trawler. Yeah, so correct. That, that's where we're all at right okay. now. Okay. How far was that boat, by the way? Uh, I would say a kilometer, yes. maybe a bit more. Yeah, in current. But I mean, it, was, it was a trawler in a pattern, though, so it was slowly moving away from me mm, uh, yeah. in its, in its uh, trawl pattern. Okay, so, so let's pick up where we left off. Okay, about... Two hours, three hours into the whole ordeal, I seen this uh, trawler. I, at this time, there was helicopters buzzing around me. I couldn't signal them. They couldn't see me. They were very close. So I did try for a while to wave the SMB about and things like that, but there was no, uh, no reaction from them. I seen this trawler, and I thought, okay, well, it's probably my best bet. Um, so... I start to swim for the trawler. Um, at this stage, I've pretty much already ditched my uh, my lead weight. I still have my uh, my backplate and wing, and my regulators and tank and things. But I thought to myself, okay, well, I'm carrying this 15 liter tank, um, and it's just extra weight that I have to then swim along with. So I also ditched the tank. I hmm. kept everything else. Um, I kept everything that could float, for example, to swim, okay. to try and ditch weight as much as I could. After about an hour and a half of swimming and getting no closer to this trawler, um, I also sort of give up on that idea. It's getting further away, even though I'm swimming for it. Um, so... I end up also giving up on the trawler idea. I was starting to get pretty thirsty at this point. Um, you know, being in salt water with waves, salt in the mouth and stuff like that, yeah. I thought, 
yeah, uh, I'll hedge my bets and try and stay still. Helicopters are still buzzing around. And what about um, what about coldness? I I was you were in a look like a wetsuit, and that was really cold. Sixty nine or seventy degree Fahrenheit. It's it colder like, than that. Yeah, that's cold. Sixty. Were you, were you cold? Uh, <laughs> no, I wasn't. Okay. Um, I the wetsuit I had was was pretty decent, um, and uh, I had also yeah. Warmed it up myself using my own body fluids a few times, so it was uh okay. wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, so temperature wise, I was fine. I was just starting to get a bit thirsty. Okay. Yeah. Um. So at some so point, then, the the video ended where you say that the plane was coming back. It's like, oh, it looks like they're coming back. They're coming back, and then the video ends. So what happens okay. then? Um. There is, I think, one more video that might be in that link that I sent you, mm. Gus, which you might want to add into the end okay. of the actual rescue bit. Um, so, yeah, basically this uh, plane came out from, and it was from the customs. <laughs> um, and its whole job was to be in the north of Australia using infrared technology to try and um, stop illegal immigrants coming in from Indonesia and Papua New Guinea and, and places wow. like that. So they had flown that down to uh, me, basically, and the plane had flown straight there and had uh, taken some bearing marks. Wow. Just so, just so it could start its search during the night. Um, and they were just doing some, some test circles. They weren't actually looking for me yet. Um, but they happened to, yeah, find me. That's awesome. Um, and if you believe it or not, the, the observer from the plane, uh, added me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we had a big, a bit of a chat about it. And he said, uh, afterwards that the reason that they found me was not because of the infrared stuff, but because they seen a, a big bull shark swimming along and they were wondering what it was doing i was about to ask that <laughs> at I, I mentioned that in my reaction at night in australia somebody on the surface that is going to interest bull sharks I, I i said that on the reaction video you never knew though right that there were sharks no. around you okay no I mean, it, it's an ocean. I mean, there's always a chance. No, I understand. But were you um, thinking about it? Was that something on nah. your mind? Okay. I love uh, it that the guy flying the plane is like, man, look at that massive bull shark. It's about to eat that poor bass. Wait a minute. That's the guy. Yeah. Like, I imagine stopped. that's what it was like. <laughs> um, wow. Unbelievable. But you could, tell, you could tell when the plane found me because its circle changed. Mm. It was doing circles. Uh, and then it was basically going over the top of my head and went over the top of my head so I could look up and see the underbelly of the plane. And then all of a sudden it just changed directions and then it was circling me. Whew. It was going in circles around me. So at that stage, I figured that the plane had spotted me. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Then the plane, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how much of my videos you bleeped out. Um, no, zero. We, we don't bleep in this show. Okay. We don't believe in bleeping. <laughs> It'd be a bit of a waste of time with my videos. It would just be a consistent beep. <laughs> right. But, yeah, so basically, then the plane sort of left. It went up really, really high. Mm. I was like, oh, now the plane's gone. And then the helicopter sort of come in. And, um, yeah. Then the helicopter also left, and I got no idea what's going on now because I was like, I was like, sure, that plane oh, seen man. me. <laughs> and then the helicopter left, and then the the plane just also disappeared. Uh, I'd learned later that the plane had just gone really high to stay out of the way of the helicopters. Mm. Um, cool. But yeah, they they were communicating with a police boat. Um, who yeah, eventually coming. They came and got you. found me. Yeah. But being that I was diving in the middle of the day in the Pacific, 
with like 40 meters visibility. I didn't have any light. Right. So it was also a bit of a challenge to try and communicate with the, you know, the, the water police on where I actually was. Uh, it's going to sound like a bit of a plug, but it's really not. The only thing that I had that had any light on was my uh, Shearwater petrol. Yes. You can plug that all you we want. We love Shearwater, but, bro. Like it's, yeah, me too. I, don't worry about but, it. So I'm sitting here thinking, you get on the police boat. Are they now <laughs> drilling you for information? What? No. They did not say what happened. How did you get lost? What no. are the details? Who's the boat operator? It didn't they go did like nothing. that. Nothing. Nothing. So... We finally talked to the, finally communicated with the police boat. The police boat came to me. Um, again, another high-sided boat. Um, and well, what I think is probably one of the funniest moments of the whole thing is I'm not a small fella, yeah. um, and I'm talking. The the police boat pulled up beside me, and I'm like, okay. I took off my gear because I had it back on. I tried to pass that up to him, and he's like, no, no, no. We'll get you out first. So that's all right, mate. Take this, and uh, so he, he begrudgingly pulled my dive gear out of the water first, and then uh, like, okay, now I'm gonna try and get up, take my fins, so I can try and climb up the side of the boat. And I said, mate, you're gonna have to go and uh, get someone else to help you. If you try and pull me out of the water like this, you'll just give yourself a bad back. <laughs> So he, he very, very begrudgingly left me at the side of the boat to go and get someone else. Oh, man. Um, but I really didn't give him much option because I was not being very cooperative. Yeah. And uh, so we got out of the boat. You're uh, helping me wrong. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You're going to um, rescue I me. I would have been yelling, do not leave me again the whole time. <laughs> no, no, no. You go back. And you help me write. All right, so keep going. Start again. We'll start again. <laughs> Do it again. Um, Give me my gear. <laughs> so we get on the boat, and um, yeah, they do the normal, are you okay? You have to sit down. I'm like, I've been sitting down for hours, but they make <laughs> me sit down anyway. Um, I said, can we get you anything? You want something to drink, you know, eat or drink? I said, I'd like some, uh, a cup of tea if you've got it, you know, something warm. And uh, they said, oh, we don't. All we have is ice cold water. It's like, oh, well, that's what it's got to be. That's what it's got to be. Um, and then, yeah, so we off off we go, start on our way home. Um, and, yeah, on our way home, uh, they're talking to me, um, doing, I guess, basic neurological and whatever um, exams with me. And... They basically just say to me, um, yeah, do you need an ambulance? They end up just asking me if I want an ambulance or anything. And I said, no, nah, I just want a cup of tea. <laughs> and that's what they uh, uh, radio over the marine channels, that I just want a cup of tea. <laughs> so I had no ambulance or, or nothing. Um, halfway home, they swapped me onto a Coast Guard vessel. Uh, I think the Coast Guard in Australia is a little bit different than the Coast Guard in the US. It is uh, voluntary. Oh, so they um, have beer. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. It's, nice. We, nice. I jumped on there, and of course, they had tea, coffee, and biscuits, and you know, yeah, like mo like most people do when, when they're retired and they are uh, <laughs> they join a volunteer organization. <laughs> it was a uh, yeah, pretty sociable. So. Uh, yeah, then I made my way home. Um, took a couple of hours, I guess. Um, then I had an interview with the yeah police sergeant. Once I got back to shore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that that's pretty much pretty much the gist of it. I being well, a little bit naive at the time, I uh, yeah, I didn't tell everything that I probably should have told, and I. Uh, Okay. Covered for the boat captain and uh, covered for the dive shop. And you earned those twenty dollars, bro. So that was what Oops. I was about to just ask because <laughs> I'm I won't let it go, but I will always respect a guest. But right, you know, I'm going to now ask. So the interview with the police sergeant. What 
Mm-hmm. Did you tell them? And then I want to know about the follow-up conversation <laughs> with the boat captain. Like, yeah. did, have you spoken? What did you guys say? Like, dude, so go ahead. Tell me the conversation with the police versus what really happened and then what you discussed with the boat captain. So, uh, like I said, I was a little bit, uh, um, yeah, I <laughs> I was not dishonest, but I was not You didn't honest. share all the details. I didn't share all the details. Right. Well, can um, you tell me what you told them? I basically told them that we went for a dive, but it was on a, a friend's basis and not a commercial operation. Okay. Um, so in hindsight, I shouldn't have done that. I mean, there should have been much more accountability for it. Right. Um, and some people really, really should have, uh, yeah, well, got their ass handed to them, I guess is the best way to say it because, uh, yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of things went wrong in a big chain and it perpetually got worse, you know, from, from the fact that I was procedures weren't followed in the beginning. Um, Diver error probably on my behalf because I was in there for so long. Uh, the emergency procedures not followed, not, notif- no, not notifying authorities uh, quick enough. Um, it was just uh, me not having what I would consider now mandatory equipment for open ocean diving, such as a uh, uh, PLB like a locator beacon, yeah. mirror, uh, fluorescein, things like that that I consider now. Uh, Funny that we talked bit, about that on the that video. We about I mean, a light, light and a... Light. But, but, GPS yeah, locator. Yeah, but um, I'm, that, and that's all good. In retrospect, you're safe, and we learn from these things. But the police at that point, they, they didn't go into much more detail other than, yep, they accidentally left me, but they were just a, a, a bunch of friends. And that, that was part, pretty much it. Well, you told them the truth on that part, though, about how they actually did leave you, like those facts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But then how did it then go later with the dive operator? And then was anybody else ever notified about this? Like you're your diving agency was there a was there an official paddy reporter whoever you were diving with all that kind of stuff absolutely nothing happened i submitted an incident report um to tdi and to uh paddy or tdi sdi and paddy um and i didn't hear anything more about it nothing at all happened as to the best of my knowledge with the actual uh captain or the dive shop. Well, he wasn't a, a certified dive operator or anything, so it's not like they can take away his license or whatever. He doesn't have anything for them to take. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do? I got, I got no license. Like, take it away. All right, whatever. Like. And so, how did the conversation then go with the captain after? I, I got, I got picked up from, um, yeah, basically the the water police uh, headquarters. Uh, by the owner of the shop, um, and it was a pretty quiet ride back. Uh, he obviously asked me the story. I told him the story. Um, we got back to the the dive shop, and the boat captain was there, and the rest of the people. Um, it was a yeah, pretty emotional. I would say not necessarily for me. I think I was still a little bit overwhelmed with everything that happened um the conversation with the captain was uh yeah pretty uh what's the word non confrontation confrontation yeah, yeah that's the word yeah um yeah nothing really happened um i mean i'm not a particularly uh hot heavy spoken or don't speak too many harsh words in anger. So so the conversation um, was more like, uh, you know, we're glad everything worked out, glad everything, everybody's okay. You know, like, yeah, something shouldn't have happened the way they happened, but I'm glad everything worked out. That, that's kind yeah. of how the conversation went? Okay. Yeah. Are they still I, running charters, this yeah. particular captain? 
they were running charters with that particular captain for many years. I don't know if they still are now, um, but last I knew they were. Um, since wow. then, that captain has then got his license in order to do it properly. Mm, okay. Um, whether, yeah, my, yeah, whether he should or not, I don't think that he should have. I have known that uh, on a few trips since then, um, there's been some pretty major issues, such as the propeller falling off the boat, for example, oh, and having to call the Coast Guard again and be towed back to shore, things like that. Well, so, well then do, you, do you think, because I, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to get this in the comments, I, I guarantee you we're going to get this in the comments. Do you think it would be irresponsible of us now not to state who this captain and charter is? I'm asking this as a question. I would, I, I don't want to hurt them, but you're telling me that you feel like they're still doing things that are not proper then. But this happened to you five years ago. Yeah, but right, you said Jake, that I mean, it happened yeah. afterwards to a bunch of other people as well, right? Not not the same incident, or just other incidents of, of yeah. you know, just. They don't have the best be track record. Do you feel. Yeah. Or, okay. Do you feel like there's a safe operator now? Do you feel like you would wreck. You could consciously now, based on the fact that he has a captain's license and so forth, would this be somebody that you would recommend to go scuba diving with? Not at all. Well, then, who because, are they? Because, you know. You, you know, once once you've been uh, once you've been burnt, um, yeah, it, it's hard to get that trust back. You know, like how many chances do you give someone if you know several things that have gone wrong, some being relatively minor compared to others, such as myself. Um, you know, being a, a fairly major thing to, you know, neglect of maintenance, neglect of whatever else. Yeah. Then I they mean, then they should seems- then they listen. I care about the dive community at large. I care about safety protocols. It's in my DNA and in my training. Uh, I think you're a course director. I'm an instructor trainer with SSI. I don't know who they are. I don't want to hurt anybody. But for sure, that's what the purpose of incidents reports are. If they are not following proper safety protocols now, they should not be doing any scuba diving charters unless and until they remedied it. I'm right. not saying forever, but what it, they deserve to be able to say, this is what we do now. This is why we don't have these issues anymore. And that's just, I mean, we are self-governed because we, in fact, do take our own precautions or inflict consequences to make sure we are safe. Otherwise, we're going to be regulated by the government. And that's that's right. the facts, folks. That's yeah. the way it runs in our scuba diving world. Yeah, we also need to have, you know, some accountability for the actions that whether we, you and I, Gus, take it as instructors or, you know, dive professionals or, um, you know, whether it even be via, uh, you know, any social media platform, we have to sort of take that, responsibility or it's gonna um, or it's not gonna get better right it could correct, happen again 100%. so it's really a r- responsible thing but i think i think there's a lot to learn uh from what happened to, to jakey and i'm glad that you agreed to come and and talk to us about this i think one of the the things that we haven't really talked about that i think is one of the most important things to learn from this whole incident is your attitude i mean the whole attitude you had while you were stranded out there the whole attitude you had right after the incident and even now is remarkable i mean i wish everyone out there and i read some of the articles and interviews that you did uh, where they were just straight up hilarious. I mean, uh, like uh, somebody asked, like, what was the worst part about the whole thing? And you said something like missing out the $15 steak promotion that I get <laughs> that night at the club or something like that. I, I thought that was funny as hell. And then somebody says, like, how come you didn't panic and like get, you know, go crazy or whatever? And you were like, well, what, what good would have 
you know, come out of me panicking and going crazy or whatever. Like you kept it level headed. And I think that comes, you know, with experience. I mean, there's, there's a certain aspect of being an experienced diver. You have to gain that by diving a lot. And it always breaks my heart when people go and get certified and then they dive like once a year when they go out on vacations. Yeah. Like I want people to go and dive and enjoy this, but there's also an attitude, a, a, a thing of, I'm going to do everything that is in my power and in my control. And I'm not going to worry too much about the things I can't control. Like you did everything you could, like even all these details that I missed on the video of, I'm going to drop the things that are just causing drag and weight. Like my tank, I don't need my tank. I'm breathing. I'm on the surface. Uh, I'm going to drop my lead weights, but I'm going to keep the stuff that floats like my BCD and my, you know, my SMB. And like, I'm going to keep the stuff that will help me if I have to spend the night because if I'm spending the night, everything that floats is going to help me. And the more I stay out of the water, like I saw in some of them, like you're sitting pretty high up. Like it feels like the water level is at like your chest. So the higher you are out of the water, the less contact you have with the water and the warmer you're staying. So I think that's the one thing that we haven't really talked about a whole lot um, in this whole interview and the, and the reaction. But I think that's what kept it, you know, from escalating and ending up. Like the guy that we keep talking about that stabbed himself in the heart, uh, you know, in the cave uh, to prevent them from downing. So I think you know your attitude through the whole the whole thing was was awesome, and I think more people can learn from that. Yeah, thanks, man. Well Absolutely. said. It, well said and agree. And it, did you ever give up? It didn't look like you really ever gave up. Did you always think they were going to get you? <laughs> It was a, a half truth when I said that you know that that line that I'm always quoted for, uh, that's a rap on old Jakey. I figured that, um, you know, if they hadn't found me during the day with helicopters and everything so close, that I had very slim chance of them finding me through the night or the next day. So it was after you know as the sun was going down and I said you know, that's a rap on old Jakey. It was like a, yeah, it really could be. This could be, you know, the last whatever. Yeah. Um, but as for the panicking thing, you know, it, it doesn't help anything. You know, you said it a heap of times in your videos as well. You know, when there's been a lost diver in a cave or something, um, we're all sort of cave divers. Um, so having that panic, it, it doesn't, uh, it clouds your, your, your thoughts. Right. So, trying to stay as clear headed and try to be as like methodical as you can when it comes to doing anything is, is what you need to be able to do in that, um, that type of situation, I think. So, yeah, it's. So now my final question is um, when you go on boat dives now, both for you and your students or other people you're diving with, what, what do you carry? Okay. What's on you? So, <laughs> um, I have basically a canister light um, canister without any of the electronics. <clears throat> and inside there, I have a PLB, uh, like the one you uh, showed before. I also have a mirror, uh, which I thought would, would have been super helpful to try mm. and reflect into the uh, cockpit of the helicopter. Um, some fluorescein which is like the, the dye that you can empty. Hmm. Um, and yeah, just a whistle as well as obviously, you know, the normal stuff like SMB and, and sure. stuff like that. Right. Okay. I, I've often thought about now they have those, uh, I don't know exactly what they're called, like the, the sheets of plastic that fold up really, really thin and you can unfold them and they take up a very big area of bright orange. Hmm. I often thought about seeing if I can get one of them and throwing it <laughs> yeah. in as well. Understand. I've seen those, yeah. But understandable. So, yeah, that makes sense. And it's a good message to everybody to carry some of these additional items like the light and the GPS tracking device. I love the mirror. I never thought about that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, that was the first thing was for me. I was like, as I was sitting there, I found myself trying to find things that would reflect and the only thing that I had that would do any reflection was belt buckles from my harness and, um, yeah, my shear water, trying to bounce the light off my shear water. So a mirror for me is, is, a, is a hard yes now for any open ocean stuff. 
And you can get it with a little magnification. So if a bull shark is about to hit you, you shine, <laughs> reflect it back at him. He thinks he's a bigger shark, and that they'll be, yeah. you know. Yeah. Abs, you dive. This is not expert advice. I'm just. You dive a kiss rebreather. What do you dive? Sidewinder? <laughs> Classic. Classic. Ca oh. uh, cave diving? Uh, I do do cave diving. Um, I did it in Australia. Um, now, being in Europe, um, I don't really have a team yet to go with hmm. and i think it's uh we gotta you go gotta visit. have a team you have a team that you trust i think, I think you need to make a big thing we gotta go i visit think you Jakey. need to make a trip either we make a trip to visit you yes or you because australia is pretty epic or you know he's, trip in, and he's visit. in amsterdam you're in amsterdam right oh Jakey? yeah yeah oh yeah. amsterdam oh well that's pretty awesome we could yeah. lot, we, we could go there as well <laughs> or oh, yeah. you could visit us and we could meet in high springs For sure also known as cave country I'll buy you a $15 Always wanted steak, to. no problem. Always wanted to, never quite got there. And now with this uh, current pandemic, it's uh, yeah. that extra little bit hard. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Thank you so much. I personally want to thank you both. Gus, wow. Talk about a surprise. I can't even <laughs> believe this happened. I'm sitting there reacting. I don't know if you saw that, but I'm like, man, I wish he was in front of me. I want to ask what I did ask. And that's the part I want to thank you for because you were very honest. And I, it can only help by you being honest like this. It's, it's never about trying to embarrass anybody or get anybody in trouble. But we're a self-governed body and we all care about each other. We only have each other. I tell my new students this all the time. We only have each other to take care of each other as it relates to our activity of scuba diving. So thank you so much for this. No worries. Yeah, I agree. Oh, hardly. Absolutely. And we'll drop the links to, you know, Jacob's uh, YouTube channel. You don't have a whole lot of videos there, Jake. We need we need some more stuff. So you do some you do some uh, cool dives. You're a tech diver as well. Uh, so I'm sure people watching this video will go and start subscribing to your channel and they're going to want to see more videos. Trust yes. me. Uh, I've always meant to. It's just uh, never quite happens. Well. You have no excuse now. Okay. Uh, we, yes, Dad. We, yes, Dad. <laughs> well, you we a, want more more content. Well, you have a great demeanor. You're smiling. Absolutely. You did. You stay. You did during the whole uh, situation, as Gus pointed out, and um, it'd be yeah. a real honor to get to meet you. And I'm just, I'm so glad, obviously, that you're okay. I really am. Thanks, man. Yeah, yes, it'd be sir. good. Uh, we'll try and make a, an appointment. Absolutely. And thanks, everyone, for watching uh, this reaction slash interview with Jakey and Woody and myself. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already and give us a thumbs up and like this video as well. Please subscribe to Jakey's channel. He's going to upload some more videos, I promise you. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.